Thank you for tuning in to the AJ Nashville podcast. Here's your host, AJNashville.com. Thank you for tuning in to the AJ Nashville podcast. Here's your host, AJNashville.com. What's up, guys? Alex here, AJNashville.com. Sorry for the late podcast. It's been an extremely crazy, busy Friday. It's been a crazy, busy month, don't you think? Definitely. We've got we've got Luis here with us. He's been putting in work, grinding. You know, we're going to talk about something that kind of has to do with this, right? You brought it up, right? Being the Buffalo, and by being by being the Buffalo, we're not talking about being the fat, lazy guy in the room. We're talking about a uh, concept or a factual thing that that happens in the world, and it's the difference between a cow and a buffalo. There was something that was was read by one of our friends about this, and that's. Uh, when a, a storm is coming, a herd of cow will actually try to run from the storm. And I assume that's out of fear. They're probably running away from it to try to get away from it. But a buffalo, on the other hand, will stand up and walk towards the storm. So the people that are walking away from a storm, like anything, it prolongs it. They stay within the storm longer because they're moving in the direction that the problem is moving into. And then you have... The people, driving? or in this case, Beamer? the buffalo, that's saying, you know what, we're going to hit this head on. So we're just going to charge and punch straight through this. And, and an example, and this is kind of a poor example, when I went to Dallas, you know, there was a huge storm coming up, and it was coming through Louisiana, coming through Texas. Uh, a lot of people were worried about what the storm was going to do damage-wise. And so basically from Memphis to Dallas, I was heading into a storm. I was in a storm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And my car, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the speed limit. So right. being headed into the storm, though, you know, there, there's a couple logical things. You could either sit and wait and hope that the storm passes you. Now, granted, there was areas that I hit where uh, there was there was actually roads that were shut down because of flooding. So I chose just to continue to drive forward, continue to push, and continue to go and punch through the storm. You figure if a storm's coming this way at 40 miles an hour, and I'm going into it at 60 65, right, the speed limit, the chances of me getting through it quicker are better, you know. And so when we talk about our problems and the things that we're faced with, a lot of us are quick to forget about our problems, put our problems aside, push our problems be behind us, or not behind us, I'm sorry, push our problems to the side and not directly deal with them. No, you don't. They, they weigh on you. Well, and sometimes they multiply. You know, an example is... Late payments on mortgages, for example. And I say that because we're mortgage people. But late payments on it, what happens is instead of calling the servicer, which yeah, servicers aren't uh, landlords, they don't want to sit there and service alone. But instead of calling them back and saying, here's my situation, here's what I'm going to do to fix it, some people continue to run from the problem, compounding it, making it worse instead of finding a solution. You know, and like I said, that's a very light uh, well, it's it's not a light issue, but it's a, a example right. of how facing a problem versus running from it is going to hurt you or is going to hurt you less than more. Does that make sense? So when we see problems, what's the best thing to do? Hit it head on, address the issue, you know, clarify. For one, you want to clarify what the issue is. Obviously, if you have a problem come up, the actual problem itself may be stemming from a different issue. You save that for happy Which, hour. at that point, you have to well, clarify, hey, what is my true. issue? What's my actual that's problem that's created these other circumstances? You know, if you're in a situation where, let's say, you lost your job, okay, what's the actual problem? Did you lose your job because maybe you had poor work performance? Or maybe you lost your job because... You stay up drinking every single night and you come into work smelling like booze and right. you can't function and can't get through the day without going to lunch and having a drink. You know, there's a lot of other compounding factors. Well, that's true. But, you know, it, on the flip side, if it's creating issues, then you have to deal with them. You know, as adults, we should have enough discipline to go through and deal with certain things. But sometimes there's problems that compound that are not, not necessarily out of our control, but out of our mindset. You know, so when you have an issue like the, let's say drinking, for example, some people use drinking to get rid of the rest of the issues. You know, it's, it's easier. You can't pay your bills. 
You don't want to think about it. You go home, you crack open a beer, one turns to three, three turns to six, six turns to 12. Pretty soon you're doing it on a day-to-day basis. Your family's pissed off, your employer's pissed off, and it creates more and more and more issues as opposed to just identifying what the initial problem was to begin with, you know? Um, And I think that's something that all of us, to some degree, have been through. There's nobody here that's perfect. There's nobody here that listens to this podcast that's never hit an issue in their life that didn't bring them down. Right. These days, you know, one of the big things I'd always learned or was told when I was younger is, leave your problems at the door. When you're here to work, you're here to work. You know, or the other thing is, it's very hard to do. It's extremely hard to do, regardless if you have a lingering yeah, issue. You know, you you may sit there no, I'm just saying, and be in a situation where you're upset at a person, you have to spend and then you sit at work and you're trying to get issues. focused and you that's regain your, your bearings, that's, and that person pops time. in your head, or but, that person you know, sends you a message or an you, email or something like that, that, and then that recreates well, the problem. You know, how do you not bring things to work? It's extremely yes. Cell phones, computers, how about emails, text messages, people dropping in. Your job. I mean, we're in in such a free world that. Sometimes those things happen. You know, but here's... Um, go ahead. No, have you ever lost money due to anger? Your lunch fixing something and my response to that that's is, time. That's the no, you don't lose money due to anger. You know, anger in, in itself how do you, how do you doesn't create that? an issue that's going to create well, a and that would cause you to lose your job or lose money. I think the... the, the you know, I don't know how you don't bring things to work. Not letting it affect you is the big thing. You know, somebody asked on one of the forums in Facebook the other day, um, have you ever lost money due to anger? And my response to that is, no, you don't lose money due to anger. Anger in, in itself doesn't create an issue that's going to create a problem that would cause you to lose your job or lose money. The display of anger is what creates an issue. <laughs> the fact that you're upset can be held internally until the proper time and then it's channeled properly. But the people that get frustrated, get angry, and then lash out, that's where the problem is. That's where you lose money. That's where you lose respect. That's where you lose confidence. You know, I've had situations in my life where I've been angry and it's motivated me. You know, I've been in a situation to where somebody has challenged me and I'm like, all right, fuck you, I'm about to do this. And that's what we do. We buckle down, we strap down, and we get it done. And it's more to prove a point, and it's challenging or channeling that anger in a proper direction. You know, so anger in itself doesn't get you in trouble. It's the improper display of it. You know, we all have emotions. I mean, we laugh, we cry, we we get angry, we, we're we happy, you know, whatever it is. All of us have different ways of, of showing those emotions. When I was younger, the big thing I would do is my teachers and the people around me would say this glaze would come over me. I'd get upset, and they said they, they could look into my eyes, and my eyes would be half open. You know, I would just have a look on my face, and they knew that look meant that something was going on, something mm-hmm. was wrong. And it was a it was combining emotions. I didn't I didn't display feeling hurt or feeling upset. I displayed it all as anger. You know, and, and that's I think a lot of kids do that nowadays. Instead of sitting there and saying, you know what, I'm upset because of this, it's easier to say, fuck you, get out of my face. Or it's easier to yell at your parents or, or whatever it may be, as opposed to saying, here's my problem. You know, nobody wants to, to be, especially from a man's standpoint. Men don't want to be considered the weaker person, you know. So dealing with those issues and and, and bringing out the fact that you have a, a deficiency, I wouldn't even call it a deficiency. You you have just an emotion that's that's Impossible. there is much different oh, yeah. than oh my god being yes, soft or not displaying emotions <laughs> they were the worst. or being a crybaby or whatever you know people call it nowadays. That's a big thing I know, and I've heard this from a lot of people with the military. You know, if you're hurt, if something happens, you're not going to run and say I need to go see a medic because I sprained my ankle. You're going to tough it out. You're going to keep running on it. Right. So, which well, well, in turn could yeah, create very bigger stressful. issues, right? It's not only stressful for them, but it's like also your, stressful your plugs. for your Did you ever the use lenders, 3M earplugs? Uh, the agents, <laughs> when you're dealing with I know if you're, you know, on, 20 if you're on Facebook, you've seen all the lawsuits and, and, and everything month, going on with 3M, so I just get, had to, you know, to toss it in there. But So, what's your thoughts, Luis? I mean, obviously, um, you're sitting here, you've seen first, some of the frustrations and things we go through on a regular basis. You know that a big portion of what we do on a day to day is helping people handle has they're up and down emotions, you know, buying a home is stressful. And the behind. Yeah, the behind. And um, I've I've finally felt yeah. um, the stress from it. Not only that, because, you know, I, I got things going on uh, on my own that I'm having to, to trudge through. So, yeah, I don't look in the mirror. <laughs>
No, but yeah. I mean, that's true. You know, you this can, uh, people, uh, people can only observe so much from where they're standing. And, and the you know, it's easy to observe the behinds of yeah. others when you're sitting and, in the bleachers uh, instead of playing I've, in the game. I've mm -hmm. And so as you get more integrated with what it is that, that yeah. you do on a day to day, you know, I, I that's going to create frustration. It's going to create uh, anger. It's going to create right. unhappiness. It's going to create stress. Well, like looking at your face every day, that's got to be rough. No, but I mean that it, that it is true. You know, you can uh, people uh, people can only observe so much from where they're standing. I wish you know, it's easy to observe the mistakes of others when you're sitting in the bleachers <laughs> instead of playing in the game. And so, as you get more integrated with what it is that that we do on a day to day, that's going to create frustration. It's going to create anger. It's going to create unhappiness. It's going to create stress. But at the end of the day, just like you don't bring your stress to work, don't take your work stress home. You know, there has to be that. That feeling of washing it off and being able to focus on what's important. I mean, let's face it. I'll spray you down with a hose until you feel better. <laughs> but I mean, let's let's face it. At the end of the day, we do what we do for multiple reasons. But one of the primary reasons why we do what we do is to support our lifestyles, our families, you know, something of that nature or that degree. And so if we're never able to disconnect and spend that time with our family or friends or whatever it is that is important to us, then it's pointless to do what we do. You know, there's no sense in closing 20 deals a month if you ignore your family for 30 days. That's pointless, right? Why can't we just watch TV? So it's that balance, and that's something that I struggle with is finding that balance. As you know, I will answer emails and text messages all day into the night, and in turn, it, it creates problems you know, from a family standpoint, because I don't give them my undivided attention. Don't worry about me. Worry about you. <laughs> right, but oh, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you on that because this is how we make money. We can, but we can't because if I don't answer this call, that TV's gonna be gone. <laughs> no, but but Andrew Paul says it best. He says, "Be where you are." You know, so if you're here at work, be at work. If you're at home, be at home. And knowing how to discipline is something, discipline that at least is something that I'm working on myself. You know, all of us have something that we can use to help strengthen our lifestyles or strengthen our personalities or strengthen our professional careers or personal lives or whatever it may be. From a sales standpoint, I feel like I do pretty good on a sales aspect. What I don't do well at is disciplining myself and balancing things. And those aren't, you know, I'm not going to walk into a sales coach's office and be like, all right, bro, teach me how to pitch this. You know, it's a different type of, of growth. But it's one of those things that I have learned over the years. You know, I've been doing this mortgage thing for about 15 years now. And over the years, I have learned that having a coach is very important. Having somebody that can help bring your, you know, pull you back from what you're going through and say, hey, try this, do this, try that. You know, people that have learned from experience, maybe. Uh, people that may have strengths in discipline, but not strengths in sales, that you can learn the discipline aspect from. You know, those things are important. Sometimes getting advice or taking a step back is one of the most important things we can do to help advance ourselves further. You know, I've used this analogy in the past, and it's, it's the trees. And the trees are the people that are stagnant. They stay where they're at. They're okay. You know, they, they bring in their... their um, paychecks, they do what they, they can with their families, they're okay with with not being extraordinary. And and bear in mind when I say that, not everybody has to be extraordinary. Not everybody has to hustle on a, a frequent basis or anything like that. If you're okay with going to work at nine, getting off at five and spending the night with your family and having dinner and watching TV and going to bed, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if that's what, what drives you and what motivates you, that's okay. What I'm saying is there's also the thrive to be better in all aspects of life. And that's where I'm at. I want to be better not only professionally but personally. I want to be able to balance things. I want to be able to be disciplined. And that's where you have a person that's going up a path. And going up that path, you reach out for people that can bring you up further up the path. Does that make sense? You know, kind of like what you and I talk about. It's almost like a daily basis there's a training going on. Like, hey, do this, do this, do this. Hey, you won't understand this until you've done this quite a few times, but this is why we do that. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, if you're not learning, you're not growing. 
So what I encourage people that are listening Everything. to this to do I mean, is find somebody that's a little bit better at what it is you're deficient at and then allow them to help mold you, help grow you, whatever it is. And you don't even have to necessarily pay for that knowledge. Obviously, if you're starting out and you're just trying to get a little bit further and maybe money's an issue, a lot of this stuff you can find on YouTube. You know, it's it's crazy. I mean, you see me all the time. YouTube is always on and I'm not watching like... I don't know. I don't even know what kind of stupid videos you can watch on YouTube. Or hey, but I it's mean, usually, AJ Nash. That's true. That's true. But it's usually motivational stuff, motivational or things. stuff to so, you know help me grow mentally. And so, you can find so many of these things for free. There's so many people out there. You know, Tony Robbins, for example. You can find a lot of his old shows for free. You don't have to pay three thousand dollars to go to his event. And hopefully that helps somebody grow a little bit and then they can get to the next step, the next step, and then eventually maybe they can go to a Tony Robbins event. Yeah. I mean it is now that's true. Yeah, this is hundred and forty four episodes I believe. So we we've got this down and the thing is 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 I'm speaking Mostly from experience, hey. places I've been. You know, I'm a I'm not, single I'm not man. This thing blind. These are things. You know that what I've I'm gonna go life. home to? That's the biggest thing. A you know, that's the whole tank. reason why this podcast exists. Is so we can talk about things to hopefully help somebody else bring them up. You know, there's there's always room for growth. There's always room for improvement. So, anyways, it is now. Heck, it's almost six o'clock. It's been a long day. All right, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Hopefully, this you can have more things to do, but we just got done talking about this ballots thing. <laughs> and I've been at this, yeah. Oh, hey, nothing, <laughs> no, but but like a uh, Luis just said, Luis is single, so the sneaky guys out there, hey, <laughs> and you can find him at tinder.com backslash. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Hopefully, oh, this met, this podcast has helped you find helped you find you know a little bit of motivation, so some inspiration, something that helps improve your life. I hope that this podcast is something that is constructive for you. Speaking about being constructive, I want to thank one of our sponsors, Broker Title and Escrow, Mr. Greg Fairbetter out there. Let me tell you, this guy has taken care of clients like you wouldn't believe. I mean, it, he has to kind of dislike us because we keep him so busy. But uh, yeah, yeah, we do it all the time. But if you need some help, let's say you're selling a home, buying a home, and you need a great title company, reach out to Greg and his team at 615-986-2213. Love you, Greg. Love you, Greg. All right. Hey, thanks again for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.